This program is a presentation of UCTV for educational and non-commercial use only. UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to UCLA Bruin Talk. Alongside Naomi Manea, I'm Dave Marcus. UCLA has always been a women's sports powerhouse and women's sports are going to take center stage today. A couple teams with high hopes, one heading into their tournament season and the other one just getting underway. We'll talk to a couple of great swimmers in just a moment. Before we meet our first guests, let's take a look at the upcoming events. Everyone thinks of swimming as something you do when the days get long, when the temperatures get hot, but the Bruin swim team has been working hard all autumn and winter long, and they're rounding into the end of their regular season with a match against SC, and then on to tournament action. And we're very pleased to have a couple of captains of the team, a couple of seniors join us, Danny Milligan and Sam Vandenberg. Thanks for coming on to Bruin Talk. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. Now, Danny, the season we mentioned, it's almost over. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine your senior year flying by so fast? No, it's kind of hard to imagine. You hear like everyone say, oh, four years go by so quickly, but senior year's here and it really does just go by faster because I think you already know what's coming and you already know what to expect, so it all just kind of comes one on top of the other. Sam, your home schedule's done. You have to go to SC. What's yeah. it like getting ready to have that crosstown rivalry? Well, it's pretty much like a, a home meet, you know, we have like so much support down here in SoCal and so it's just like great atmosphere, both like um, all of our parents come and then you have the SC parents come and so it's just, it's really great. We mentioned that you're both seniors and captains. How do you guys portray leadership to your younger teammates? I think just by example, we're both distance swimmers, so we're oftentimes putting in a lot of the yardage. We're there for most of the practices each week, um, just trying to give the freshmen um, some motivation, something to look towards, um, showing them how to swim in fast-paced dual meets. I know this past weekend we had um, one of our fastest-paced dual meets against the uh, two North California schools, and it was just funny to watch the freshmen kind of not used to the pace and just kind of show them, you know, it's going to be okay. <laughs> well, when you say that, what do you mean by fast-paced dual meet? You don't just get in the water and swim as fast as you can? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, for dual meets that usually um, we've had home meets, and we usually take our time. Um, we have, like, one or two heats, but this weekend we had only one heat, and it was pretty fast. It was just boom, 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 and then you have your little rest, and then boom, 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 and then another rest, and then the meet was like over. How do you prepare? How do you get the mindset ready for something that's going to move like that? Um, I think we practice it every day, so we're mm -hmm. like really prepared about it, and um, 
we're used to the fast paced, always going. So mm -hmm. I think we were. Pretty yeah. Swimming nice workouts way. are legendary. <laughs> uh, tell us what a typical practice day is like. When are you in the water? So we usually wake up around 5.30 in the water, probably by like 6, uh, swim for about hour and a half, two hours. Then we go into the weight room, uh, probably around like 8, 8.30, uh, work out for an hour down there. And then usually it's a practice in the afternoon from around 2 to 4.30 with running or yoga or some type of dry land before or after our swim practice. Okay, when you got to the part where you were coming out of the water <laughs> after the morning practice, that's when most students are getting up. Yes. When do you fit your classes in with all that swimming? Um, it's kind of been, you have to like figure it out for yourself. I know a lot of the girls will take like from 9 o'clock class till around 1. Um, some people do some night classes that go till around 9 at night. Um, just kind of personal preference. <laughs> Sam, both of you have been great students throughout your careers here on the Academic Director's Honor Roll. It's really hard but important to keep your grades up. How have you been able to do it? Um, I think swimming allows you to have really good time management skills and I think with the whole having to like schedule your classes around swimming you like learn like your priorities and I think Cindy um, oh, is always on top of us Cindy about Gallagher. Our, yes yeah. our coach she's always on top of us about like our grades and um, I think that's like a really big reason why we were the number one like GPA over all this year. So far this season, you guys coming in with a record of nine and three, it's not been an outstanding season. What factors have come into play to make that happen? Um, this year we really, we've had a like very good base of like athletes. We've had strong distance with our class and like really strong swimmers. And then they, we brought in a freshman class that just had some awesome sprinters. Um, and they've really helped us with our relays and our sprint events. And I think just as a whole, we're stronger and just a more united team this year. It's been a really good team atmosphere. Danny, you're an intermediate distance swimmer. Sam, you're a distance swimmer. Yeah. I, I, I can't imagine the mindset that allows you to go distance, to just keep going, going, <laughs> going. Seriously, in the middle of a, of, a, of a practice or in the middle of a meet, what are you thinking about while you're in the middle of swimming a distance event? Um, well, it hurts, so I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, but you really just have to think of like your other competitors and like what they're doing and just like focus on like yourself and like your goals and like you just keep going and going. I mean, when, when you're swimming, Danny, and uh, you've got competitors in all the lanes, let's say you're in one of the middle lanes, uh, mm -hmm. how, how far really can you see side to side to get an idea of how everyone else is doing? Um, you can usually see, I see like usually two people over maybe the side of the pool, um, but you really kind of just look at the people next to you and we go in with a race plan and the fun thing about our races is that they aren't a 50 freestyle, they're not 30 seconds long, it's, the mile's about 16 minutes long. So you have like a race strategy and you go in there and it's kind of fun to like play around with your competitors. Like if they get a little bit ahead of you, it gives you some motivation to get them, take them down. It's kind of fun. You mentioned something called a race plan and I imagine that the pace of swimming is important regardless what length you're swimming. Do you pre-plan that ahead of time and stick to it or do you kind of just see how things go? Um, in practice, we usually focus on um, having our paces set for us, and so we know in our mind like what we have to go, and so we usually do a couple sets with paces, and we just keep going constantly, trying to keep that pace up, and so we're pretty prepared once our race comes, but how fast, the feeling we have to go. Tell us about the leadership role that you have to assume as captains of the team. What, what are your responsibilities as captains? Um, pretty much making sure everyone's on top of everything, um, everyone has a goal, and making sure everyone's just following up with that and pretty much just setting examples for everyone. Danny, do you ever sit back and think, wow, was I like that when I was a freshman? <laughs> <laughs> that definitely happens. <laughs> or you think, oh, was I really like that? Or, oh, what did like Cindy think of me as a freshman? Like looking back, like thinking about the silly mistakes you made or the silly things you said or did. And, it's kind of funny looking back now, but at the time it seemed so serious or it seemed like you're doing the right thing. As you look back and think about who your captains were when you came in, mm -hmm. do you have a better perspective on some of the messages you were receiving? Yeah, for sure. Or some of like, even not even just captains, but the older girls and being like, oh, like, how can they like do that? Or like, wow, they like can really just like push it through. And I feel like our class and just captains have just like really risen to that. And it's really like fun to watch how we've grown up. And, um, that was helpfully like through all the leadership in the past. Sam, what are the things that are going to stand out in your mind when you look back on your career swimming at UCLA? 
Um, probably just the great friendships that I've made and just the, this whole learning experience, just being a college student and athlete. I mean, UCLA is such a great school for both academic and athletics. And so just being able to take that all in, and I, I feel really accomplished for being here. Speaking of friendships, most of the girls on the team are actually from California, Danny, you being one of the <laughs> exceptions. Does that help with the team atmosphere and the bonding? Um, yeah, I mean, if someone like Danny doesn't have somewhere <laughs> to go for the weekend or for holidays, um, people usually step in and ask if they want to come home with us or mm -hmm. pretty much. I mean, just, we're all sisters. Yeah. Well, we should mention Danny's from Phoenix. She's not from Mars. It's not that far, <laughs> not that far over. At Scottsdale, Arizona, not too yeah. far away. How would you decide to come to UCLA? Um, when I set foot on campus on my recruit trip, I just knew this was the place for me. I called and canceled on my other recruit trips. Just UCLA just makes that impression when you set foot here. And um, the team, I just loved the team here. And I liked Cindy's coaching style. So it was the right fit. <laughs> We talked about academics, and your team definitely puts um, importance on academics, but what advice would you have to any incoming student athletes on balancing the role of being an athlete and a student here at UCLA? I think it's about balancing, and then I think it's also about using everything that's available to us as student athletes here at UCLA. Um, we have awesome counselors, um, tutoring, all kinds of things that you need to, I don't know, just use that are there for you, and it's so helpful, and it really... They can make plans for you and study schedules, and it's just an awesome thing to have. Let's talk for a moment about some of the younger swimmers on the team. Uh, again, your, your seniors, your captains. Who's impressed you this year with how much <laughs> development they've had? We have a freshman from Singapore, and her name's Ting. And to make that jump from a completely different country, coming here, and she mm -hmm. came here last spring. So she came in without a freshman class and trained with us. And I think it was very hard to be away from home for the very first time and be in LA. And she didn't have freshmen around her that were going through the same thing. And then this fall, the rest of the freshmen came in and just to like watch her grow and like rise with them and just step up to the occasion and just, it's been awesome to watch her. Sam, you obviously were an elite swimmer before you mm -hmm. got to UCLA. You can't get to this level unless you are. What, what is it, the difference when you get to college and everybody's that good? Um, it's really overwhelming, um, but I think you just have to focus on yourself and like what your goals are. And I think um, the transition from being such a like a high standard and then coming into college and people are even higher than you, it's it's really overwhelming. <laughs> I was pretty in, I was in shock. Um, my freshman year and sophomore year, NCs were the fastest they had ever been, and I would have made NCs um, my senior year high school, but I did it my freshman year just because of the new suits and technology. And I think I was able to appreciate the sport a little bit more, knowing that I had to work even harder to get to the NCs, and that was a really big goal of mine, and I did it last year. And so it's an amazing meet. With Pac-10s just around the corner, what do you two do as individuals or as a team to stay motivated? I think this is one of the easiest times to stay motivated. We start to taper and we get, um, there's a lot of energy going into the SC meet, um, crosstown rivalry, and then I think that energy also just carries to Pac-10, the like final meet of the season um, for a lot of our swimmers and just gets like really pumped up to try and go some best times to just be the best that we can be. A lot of people watch this show who are making college choices. What one piece of advice would you have to a fledgling swimmer who thinks they can compete at this level? about UCLA or about getting ready for college? Um, I would say just don't limit yourself. Don't think that a school's too good or too fast or anything like that. Um, you can make it happen. And I think you just have to believe that when you find the right place for you and the right fit, just work to get there. Sam, what, what made you go to UCLA? What was your decision-making process? Um, pretty much everything. Um, <laughs> my dad has always been a UCLA fan, and he's always wanted one of his kids to come here. So. I was that kid. <laughs> and just when I stepped on campus, I knew it was the right fit for me. Um, the swim team was amazing. Cindy's coaching style is pretty much, it's pretty similar to my club team. And so I just knew. Bruin Swimming making the far turn, heading for home pretty soon. You can follow all their exploits on UCLABruins.com. Danny and Sam, thanks for coming in. Thanks Pleasure so much. You. Thank you. And we'll come right back with more UCLA Bruin Talk after this public service announcement.
A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Welcome back to Bruin Talk. Before we meet our next guests, let's take a look at this week's Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor K.K. Clark of the women's water polo team as our Student Athlete of the Week. At the Michigan Invitational, K.K. also scored a combined three goals against Northridge and Michigan. When the Bruins returned to speaker to open up their season at home, K.K. opened up play with teammate Kelly yesterday in the second quarter. By the end of the match, K.K. scored a game-high three goals to take the team past Long Beach State for a final score of 11-4. Congratulations, K.K. Clark, and good luck to the rest of the team. If you would like additional information about UCLA Athletics, please visit our website at www.uclabruins.com. And on that Bruin website, you're going to see a picture of the Bruins softball team gathered around a picture of the Bruins softball team on the outfield wall at Easton Stadium. Big number 12 next to it. The Bruins won it all last year. 12th national championship, 11th since NCAA play began. Two people that were on both of those pictures are with us today, Andrea Harrison and Coach Kelly Inouye Perez. Congratulations again on an incredible achievement. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great year. Andrea, let's talk about the College World Series last year. You had 11 RBI. You're the all-time leader in RBI in a championship series, and you hit a grand slam. What's going through your mind when you hit a grand slam in the World Series? Um, honestly, I just think about everything I've done to prepare for that single moment. I mentally prepared knowing that they could walk Megan in front of me. And to be completely honest with you, I didn't even know the bases were loaded. When you hit the ball, did you know it was gone? At contact, yeah. <laughs> and, and again, rounding the bases, what's, I mean, your, your, your heart had to be jumping out of your body. Yeah, I think it was more excitement and just to see my teammates at home you know, waiting for me at the plate, just knowing that every time, even I was the one in that moment, but knowing that it, even if I'm not, my entire team has my back throughout the entire tournament and the whole season. Coach, it's a double elimination tournament when you get to Oklahoma City, but your team went 5-0. and oh. You just ripped through the competition. What was the secret to such great success? You know, I had a, a, the wonderful uh, opportunity to be able to meet Coach Wooden, and um, I asked him one of the keys to success, and how to maintain, you know, this tradition of excellence. And he, he shared with me, you know, yesterday is as old as dirt. Um, you have no control over tomorrow, so the most important day is today. And that 2000 team did a wonderful job of taking the game uh, pitch by pitch. We played the tournament day by day and never really looked forward. Um, so we were 5-0, and oh, but each day we, we just couldn't wait to play and, and we respected the game and um, it just continued to, it continued to flow and, and we finished very powerfully at the end. You had an amazing season last year as we talked. What could you say was the biggest thing that you took out of it that you're going to take into this season with you? Um, I think now being a junior, I can take last year's entire experience and not live with the championship this year, but know that my season was a roller coaster. A lot of people only see the end because, you know, it was televised and all that stuff. But I take it as take that experience from last season and put that much more effort into this season and try to get the younger classmen on the same train as me, talk the same language, and kind of all have the same goal, just like we did last year. Andrea, your sister Monica plays shortstop. She's a year ahead of you in school. What kind of lessons or messages did she pass along to you when she was here and you were about to come here? Um, I would like to say that she would always tell me it's the best place in the world. And once I got here, I knew that it was going to be not only because my sister is here, but because of the coaching staff. There's no other coaching staff in the country that believed in me as much as they did. And it's just a family. And she taught me that even before she was committed to be a Bruin, and I was only in high school. So that's what she taught me. Coach, you've done it all. You've been in the dugout as a player, as an assistant, as the head coach. You've got a national championship now. What's it like turning it around and going into another season? Uh, you know, the, the best part of being a, a part of this as a player and as an assistant as a head is um, every year is a new year. Um, we gather a, a new group. It's a new chemistry. Um, there's new experiences and different Bruins get to step up. And it's what I love about this job is it's a new challenge every year. Um, but with that, uh, 2011 is an exciting year. You know, we return a, a solid core. 
Um, we've brought in some freshmen that are going to do a great job to step in and, and have to impact the lineup immediately. Um, but the, the exciting part is this, this program's in a great place. You know, like, like Drea said, last year wasn't perfect. And we don't expect it to be because that's what a season is. It's almost like you're building this story to be able to get to the end. And um, we expect the same. You know, our goal is to be the best um, at the end when we need to be. So we're, we're looking forward to learning a lot about who we are in 2011. And, and I, I expect for it to be a great ride. Megan Langenfeld is gone. She's graduated. She takes a Sportswoman of the Year award yeah, with her. Solid year. Um, who's going to step in, fill the void? Um, you know, there's the one thing about last year in 2010, Lang, Megan, um, had a great finish. Um, but if you really looked at the championship, it was, it was such a collective effort of the entire team. You know, different people stepped up in different moments. And um, so with that, the, the culture, our chemistry um, is a big part of our strength. And so there'll be different people that'll step up, but everybody's important. Um, we do return um, junior, redshirt junior, Katie Schroeder, and she was impactful in her sophomore year, had an All-American year. So she'll join us and, and bring a different strength um, to us. You know, I have a core with, with Drea and Gianna and Monica um, and Donna Kerr that I think are going to bring great experience and allow the freshmen to come in and just play. Um, so it's a team thing. I expect every one of them to step up. I expect every one of them to be prepared for whenever the game calls on them. And, and with that, you know, 2011 is going to be a great year. One of the things that comes with winning a national championship, as we were talking before the show, is that big target on your back. How will you and your team, and how will you as a junior now, deal with that additional pressure? Well, I'll at answer first before Drea, but, um, you know, for us being a Bruin, um, and I think all of us here at UCLA, when we put the four letters on, you accept that. You know, like I tell them, you, know, you signed up for it. Being a Bruin means you're going to have a target on your back, whether you win a championship or not, because our expectations every year are to be right there at the top. So with us, we respect the game. You know, I think every day we, we take it day by day, and, and for us, the most important part is, is um, our culture, that being a Bruin, we take a lot of pride in that, and every day, you know, we have a lot of John Wooden things. You know, we, we create a masterpiece every day. That's our goal, you know, and it's always a great day to be a Bruin. All that being said, Andrea, your team's number one in the USA Today poll, so everybody's gunning for you. What kind of pressure does that put on you when you go out there? Um, I don't think of it as pressure that much. Like Coach said, coming to UCLA, you know that that target's going to be on your back. Um, when you play different teams, it's always going to be the championship game to them. And as long as we take it game by game and pitch by pitch and not look ahead to, you know, Pac-10 or postseason, this team will stay in a good place. You got your rings at a football game in the Rose Bowl <laughs> on the field against Arizona. Pretty fitting. Tell us about that experience. <laughs> It was awesome because we were standing in line, we're all waiting, we couldn't believe that we were actually getting our rings against Arizona, like, ironic, right? <laughs> so, when we're on the goal line, you know, they're representing each girl and we're all waving and some of the fans were booing at us and we, you know, as Bruins, <laughs> we take it classy, we're just laughing and think it's funny, but it was definitely amazing playing Arizona with the football team and being out there on the field against them. Andrea, you're a junior now, and we talked about it's a different role now that you're an upperclassman. How are you a leader to those younger than you on the team? I think just representing the four letters on and off the field um, by putting in my best effort 100% when I'm at the field, in practice, even when nobody's watching, and to kind of preach to the freshmen that this is what we do as Bruins, and I kind of just want them to see that this is the best place to be. and. It's just a dream come true to be here, and they love it. So it's kind of easy for me to do right now because they enjoy being here. You've got the Stacy Winsberg Memorial Tournament at Easton Stadium starting in the middle of February. Feel good to get out there and actually play some games again? Definitely. <laughs> We've been practicing every day since after the 1st of January, and it's awesome to see the team kind of come together, work as an entire group because it's mostly individuals and scrimmaging, and now we can kind of see what we're going to put out there on game day. And it's exciting to play at home, in front of your fans, at your own stadium. It's a good place to start off the season. And Coach, after that opening tournament, you don't come back until March 21st. You've got some tournaments out of the area, the Cathedral City one, which I always think is a great tournament. It is. Um, how, how does traveling early in the schedule prepare you for the kind of things you're going to have to go through when you get to Oklahoma City? You know, I think uh, this part of the season, um, we literally break down the season uh, um, phase by phase and you know falls building our foundation and we, res we respect the program I spell out Bruins building the foundation in fall 
R is for respecting the program over break, and right now we're in the in the U phase, which is it's kind of a team unity um, time. We'll travel, we'll deal with adversity. They still have to do well in school. Um, we learn a lot about ourselves, um, and I think it's just a great opportunity for us to kind of get out there, see what we're made of. You know, it's a grind. It's about five tournaments in a row. Um, so, you know, we really start to pull together. They get to know each other on a whole different level. Um, so we look forward to it, um, but it's also a challenge. And then we, we shut down there for, for school before we open up Pac-10. Do we get to hear the INS part of it? Well, then the I is, but before um, Pac-10, we it's Ignite, so we kind of pull together and it's time to, it's time to go. Um, and then second half of Pac-10, right before postseason, it's N, so we never let up, knowing that postseason's around the corner. Um, and if we take care of all of that, then the S is the success phase. You know, now we just get out there and we do what we do. Andrea, let's talk a little bit about conditioning. It's a long season. Uh, I know you're working on drills now, strength, all kinds of things. How do you get at your peak physical condition without getting burned out by the end of the year? Mm -hmm. um, the coaching staff does a good job of keeping us in shape. Um, we condition throughout the week, and even on days that it's not conditioning days, we lift and also do running at the field whether it's sprints or foul poles or anything like that. It's also really important for us to know what we're eating. I think that had a big impact on us. We were hydrating, you know, throughout the entire season and eating right. And I think the conditioning, so we started early on, and it showed in the end that we were not fatigued whatsoever. I know that you said that you've been working hard this last month to prepare for the beginning of season. What are practices like now just at the beginning of season? A little bit more intense. Um, we do a lot more live pitching, um, live defense, and we just like to put different players at different positions just to see who, who's going to be there because you can't expect there to be one person there the entire year. There could be an injury or whatnot. So it's more team, definitely. We work on you know team sack bunts and stuff like that that makes us kind of come together as a group and we rely on each other, and if one person doesn't get it done, we know that the next player will. So it kind of brings us together for the season. At the start of our chat today, I talked about the new banner that's gone up on the outfield wall, and it's a unique thing where the banners actually are a bit of living history. You've got pictures of all the championship right. teams. You look back at some of the earlier teams and think about when you were a young, young girl thinking about playing softball, some of the players that you probably looked up to are out there on the outfield wall. <laughs> Definitely. I would say it's an honor to know that my face is on the outfield wall up there. <laughs> Sometimes us as outfielders, we even joke around. We're like, oh my gosh, our face is still out there. <laughs> you, know? you know, you're up there with Dot Richardson and Lisa Fernandez. And, you know, last season was an amazing year. And I honestly, it's an honor to have that entire team up there on the banner. And we thank you both for coming in. Thank Congratulations you. for you. last year and good luck this year. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on UCLA Bruin Talk. Naomi and I will be back next time with another great show. Until then, so long for now.